Hi everyone and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show you a creative workaround with the limitations of Studio One Prime on how to use internal sidechain to control the compressor, the frequency that it triggers. But first, let me demonstrate how it's done in the artist or the professional edition. Let's say I have a drumless loop. And I want to compress this. I put a compressor and start adjusting the settings. I want a high compression, maybe about four point, about four, four and a half, with no knee, and a bit faster. And we'll adjust that as we go along. I'm achieving about minus twelve dB of compression. But, but that's also killing all of the lower frequency of the energy of the kick. In the compressor, this is quite easy to achieve internal sidechain. We just click filter and adjust the low cut. So the lower frequencies don't trigger the compressor. This is what the compressor is listening to and being triggered by. And the result, we now have compression, but not affected with the kick. original and change characteristic of our drum loop. So how do we achieve the same result in the prime edition where compressor plugin doesn't exist? Well let me show you. Let me just remove the compressor. In Prime, we have the channel strip. The channel strip has a low cut, compressor, expander, three band EQ, and auto gain as well. Let's see what this will do. It is a one knob compressor, so as you adjust the ratio, the threshold, Change from low compression to high compression and threshold. But as you can hear, it kills the whole drum loop as well. Now, we don't have any internal sidechain in the channel strip. To get the same or similar result, here are the steps. I'm going to right click and say duplicate the track complete. So now I have two copies of the drum. And I'm going to call this second one drum side sidechain. You can call it anything else you like. We also have channel strip. I'm going to turn it off for the time being. I'm going to turn the fader down because I don't want duplicate sounds. All I want to do is use the second copy of the audio to trigger the first one. And to do that, from the sends, and by the way, if you don't see the send, they could be hiding at the bottom, so you can just drag it up. Um, I'm going to click the plus sign and select sidechain, and the sidechain of the first channel strip compressor will appear. And I'm going to click on that. And the next step is I'm going to do it pre fader. When it turns yellow, that means the signal going to the send output to the channel strip right here is before the fader. So that way, when we have the fader down, we still have a signal going to the channel strip. I'm going to turn this off for the time being, all the way down. Let's turn the channel strip up so we can view it. And spin it there. And let's see what happens with 
the channel strip now. And no compression, of course, because there's nothing triggering. Let's increase the level. And we can starting to hear compression happening. It's going to leave that about 0 dB, thereabouts. So what's happening now is the audio signal, which is a duplicate, coming to the send, being sent to the channel strip of the first channel and triggering the compressor. The same result. So instead of the signal coming from its own channel, from its own track, it's coming from channel 2, the second track. But here's the good thing. We have a channel strip here. Let's enable that. This is our sidechain drums. So now we don't want any compression there. So now we can use the three band EQ to adjust the signal that's going to be triggering the first channel strip of our first track. Let's give it a try. Very high compression. Let's filter out all our low frequencies. We can start to hear the kick coming still through. Turn it off. Kick compressed. And then we can use the EQ again to adjust the uh, upper frequency as well. And now we're getting that pumping effect as well. Okay, let's hear before and after. This is before. All plugins turned off. And all plugins on. And as you can see, it only takes a little bit of imagination and creativity to achieve similar result. So don't let limitations stop you, but Think outside the box, be more creative, and you can achieve the same result. I hope this was helpful. If it was, make sure you give me the thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching, and have a great time making music. And I'll catch you in the next one.